Hi. In this presentation, I'll be talking about utilizing the increased mitigation capacity of 40 DDoS E-Series appliances. My name is Heyman Jain, and I'm VP of Product Engineering within the 40 DDoS group at Fortinet. Before we get into the actual mitigation, it's important to understand the trends in DDoS attacks domain. So these days there are more continuous attacks rather than occasional attacks as in the past. That leads to a requirement for always on mitigation uh, by the equipment deployed in the data centers. Simultaneously, the data centers are migrating from 10 Gbps links to 100 Gbps links. And uh, on the attacker side, it's easier to create reflection attacks these days, which have a large multiplication factor, which means with a very small uh, starting attack, you can create a much larger impactful attack due to reflection and multiplication. Therefore, DDoS attack mitigation equipment is uh, expected to block larger attacks. Given that, we have created two models, 1500E and 2000E. The 1500E model uh, has an increased inbound mitigation capacity of 160 Gbps, whereas the 2000E can block all the way up to 280 Gbps of inbound attacks. Examples of large attacks mitigated with automation include DNS attacks, including reflection uh, attacks, uh, which are some of them are unsolicited responses, also unsolicited queries, uh, NTP reflection, source floods from limited number of IP addresses, protocol floods, including TCP, UDP, ICMP, uh, GRE, and so on, fragmented floods, uh, floods to TCP and UDP specific ports, floods to specific ICMP type and codes, and destination floods to specific destinations. It's important to also understand uh, how this whole thing works in terms of interfaces. So 40DDoS 2000E has eight 10 Gbps interfaces, which makes it 80 Gbps, and 200 Gbps, uh, totaling 200 Gbps, and uh, as a sum total, that makes it 280 Gbps of inbound link capacity that can be mitigated with this appliance. It's also important to understand the how, how the switch fabric is connected uh, to TP3s in 40 DDoS uh, 2000E and 1500 E models. So the inbound uh, front panel interfaces are connected to the integrated switch fabric, which in turn are connected to the TP3s, or the traffic processors or SPUs, as we also call them. The, the TP3s do the detailed inspection, and once it is decided that the attack is, is pretty large, uh, it's offloaded. Uh, via distress ACL rules to the integrated switch fabric and that's where the increased mitigation is done and detailed inspection continues to happen in the TP3s. Now how do you set it up? In terms of policies this whole thing depends on what we call SPP switching which is service protection profile switching you have to enable that uh, you can do that for inbound traffic only or inbound and outbound traffic. Further, you need to decide whether you want the SPP switching threshold measurement unit as packets per second or megabits per second. And then for every SPP policy that you have, you want to decide whether you want to trigger increase mitigation uh, for, for, for those. And then for each one of those that you want to enable the 
uh, in trace mitigation, you add an alternate SPP, and that has to be itself. So if you have an SPP0, you add an alternate SPP as SPP0. If you have SPP1, you add SPP1 as the alternate SPP. Uh, so for each SPP policy, you define an alternate SPP, and then you define a threshold percentage of uh, anywhere from 1 to 100. And, and these uh, are either in BPS, MBPS, or PPS, uh, as you have said earlier. Once you have done that, you need to set the signaling mode to internal uh, as compared to service provider signaling. And then we need to understand how this uh, increased mitigation works along with the SPP switching uh, for the internal uh, signaling. So every 30 seconds uh, when the port, SPP and subnet statistics are collected, uh, we go through whether the rate has exceeded the PPS or MBPS threshold that you have set. If that's done, and for that SPP policy, if alternate SPP is enabled and alternate SPP is same as the SPP uh, and if SPP switching is enabled, then we go through the top five attack destination in the last five minutes for that SPP policy. And if the drop count is above a certain threshold, a system generated policy is created depending on the type of the attack for that destination. So uh, once these are in place, they would start dropping packets uh, at the switching fabric and whatever is not dropped is passed on to the TP3. And these ACLs are then monitored every 30 seconds for continued drops. When the drop falls below a certain low threshold, then this ACL is disabled and not deleted uh, so that uh, you can later uh, monitor these ACLs and, uh, and see what are the drops related to them. And if at a later time uh, the same kind of attack repeats, the same ACL is re-enabled. So that allows you to see the traffic uh, drop graphs and the rates corresponding to these uh, ACLs uh, even in the past. So these auto-generated distress ACLs uh, appear as system generated with the last column showing system generated uh, with a one uh, and corresponding to the type of attacks different rules are generated. And over time, if the attack pattern changes due to a multi-vector uh, type of attack, um, more and more uh, system-generated rules are created or disabled depending on how the attack is going. So these attacks would be, uh, these uh, rules would be enabled and disabled uh, by the system automatically every 30 seconds. And this shows a rule which has been uh, disabled because the drops have fallen below a low threshold. Now, once you have these rules in place, there would be packet drops uh, <clears throat> in the switch fabric. And you can see them in the distress ACL drop graphs uh, under monitor tab. You can also see these in a tabular form and graphical form uh, in the executive summary under the top uh, distal, this is ACL drops. And you can also see them in the distress ACL, uh, as distress ACL denied under the DDoS attack log. So that's the major benefit of these attacks, uh, these, this feature that it blocks large attacks automatically, it unblocks automatically uh, when, the rule, uh, when the rule is no more uh, needed and you can uh, audit trail all the attacks which are 
being blocked uh, through reports and graphs. You can uh, have SNMP monitoring of these, uh, these new rules which are automatically created and that makes this feature extremely powerful. That brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope you like this feature and use it for your customers and for your data centers.